Welcome to another episode of Talk to Smack Zigzag Zack. As always, I'm your host, Zigzag Zack, aka 3Z, aka Dark Nautilus Mother. But you already knew that. Today, I'm coming at you with my Ring of Honor Death Before Dishonored 2016 pay per view review. Yes, I'm one of those suckers that still pay for Ring of Honor pay per views. Why? I don't know. I love support it. Either way, I'm here for you. Anyway, previously last week I had a Impact slash Ring of Honor review posted. Um, I forgo that this week for this review of Ring of Honor. Um, and I'm going to attempt to order Evolve 66-67 um, tomorrow. I'm watching both of the review for you guys if I can get it on my computer. It's kind of old. So but I'm going to try to see if I can get that for y'all. Um, but anyway, on to the show. And just so y'all know... I'm not wearing any pants. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, first match was the four corner survival match. You had the guy who won the top prospect tournament, Leo Rush, his tiny ass, versus the guy who won it last year, Donovan Dijak, his gigantic ass, versus. I can't even pronounce his name. I'm just going to call him, and I'm not the butcher, I was going to call him the addictions friend. The Addiction's Friend versus Jay White. The match was better than I expected. They were really last, last, well, last on the, they're really lax as well on the rules as far as the tagging goes. It almost seems like they just did, called it Four Corners because it's a Ring of Honor stable, but in all actuality, it was just a Fatal 4 match because they was going, you know, haywire the entire time. But I felt that because of the four guys involved and what's going on, it made it better. And, you know, Dominic Dijak pinned Little Rush to get his win back from um, TV show this week. He should be on his way up. So, here's a question I always ask. Is he, I always ask whenever somebody gets a number one contendership shot. I feel like sometimes people just get the win, win these matches. They get the shots just because they're gaining old men or they're popular. And there's no chance they're actually going to win the belt. So it's like, eh. So I always ask, do they have a chance of winning the belt? Does Donovan Dijak have a chance of dethroning Bobby Fish for the belt? I would hope not. I like Bobby Fish way better. <laughs> I mean, I would accept Donovan Dijak at this point as TV champ. But like I said, Bobby Fish, I would like him to have a little longer reign. Um, I was speaking to Bobby Fish. He wrestled and defended successfully his championship against Mark Briscoe later on the show. And again, a match better than expected. They had some cool spots in there. Nothing like, whoa, I wasn't like, nothing blew my mind. Um, and this pair, we had a lot to live up to because I was watching Cruz Lake Classic. And it was a couple matches that Gargano versus Ciampa that blew my mind. Also, the um, Cedric Alexander versus Bushi match was killer. So, I don't know if any of the matches tonight were on that level, except for the main event. But like I said, you know, these two matches right there were better than expected. And another match better than expected, Silas Young versus Shibata, his big debut in the United States. Love this match. Again, it wasn't a barn burner or anything, but I really quite enjoyed it a lot. Like, <laughs> they, they hit each other hard, they were slapping, they were spitting, they were disrespecting each other out about the match, but at the end of the day, it was still all about respect. Silas Young lost, and after the match, Shibata slapped him again anyway. Silas Young slapped him back, and they shook hands. Because that's what men do. Because that's what men do! <laughs> Yo, I really enjoyed it all around, just the whole manly one-upmanship, and like I said, after the match... Everything was on point. Enjoyed it thoroughly. And I guess the theme of this whole night was the matches were better than I expected. Like, every single match was better than I expected. Even the six-man tag match. Where you had um, Yano, versus, was Yano and RPG, you know, or Pungy Vice versus G.O.D. Bullet Club. With the, and they had a Japanese pimp as well. I think the right team won. 
And again, the matches was not nothing didn't blow my mind. Well, actually, it's probably one of the least favorite match on the card, but it still wasn't bad. And again, had better than any right it had to be. And Yano was actually more entertaining than I thought he'd be too. His whole bit with not knowing how to get the American run, <laughs> American turnbuckle law, and remember having to give him the scissors to cut the shit off, and it was hilarious. And hitting everybody with the pad and taking a move on the pad. I was like, if he ends and loses. And gets a one, two, three, and somebody pins him after moving the pad, that'd be too much. <laughs> but they didn't, they got it, uh, he kicked out, they had these little any finisher there, and that was it, uh, moving on, they went straight. And I have to say, I feel like Adam Page, his gimmick is a little racist, I'm just gonna come out and say it. It's kind of old, I mean, I like old school gimmicks sometimes, but I don't know. With him just being white and all. Being a white American walking around with a hang rope, just something doesn't feel right about it. And I think it's an awful freaking gimmick change. Now, with that said, this match is awesome. Adam Page is a really good wrestler. Jay Briscoe's great. Um, after the match, he, um, Adam Page tried to uh, choke out Yano. And, you know, I wouldn't say little known fact, but probably easily forgettable fact. The very first Neverweight Open six man tag. Winners were the Bristols and Yano. So came out to save his old tag partner Yano and they had a match. And this match was vicious. I'll give him that. This match was vicious. One of the best matches on the card. Blue Wear my expectations. This match was vicious. They were putting you through tables, doing mean things at one point. Um Adam Page had Jay Briscoe tied up to the railing and hit him with the chair, almost knocked him out. They had um Jay Briscoe just Messing Adam Page up, throwing him through tables. Oh, and Adam, when Adam Page um, did his finishing move on Jay, on Jay Briscoe on the outside, that was so nasty. Whew. But yeah, he was finally able to put Jay Briscoe down for the for the pin. Um, excellent match. Awesome all around. Then you had the donkey. Okay, I'll say this. My second least favorite match. I would say his passage is decent. Adam, I'm not sorry, Adam, but Dalton Castle versus Okada. You think this match would have been fan freaking tastic, but it wasn't. Maybe it's the middle of the show when I was kind of in between things, but it just felt like it was just there for me. It wasn't bad, but it felt just there. Um, I wasn't really impressed too much. Moving on. There was the three different, uh, the triple tag match. You had the Addiction defending their belts against the Japanese teams of Elgin and Tanahashi and the Ibushi, I'm mean, sorry, Nato and Evil. I don't know why I said Ibushi, sorry. <laughs> Nato and Evil. Again, this match was way freaking better than it should have been. Like, whoa. Maybe I just came in with way too low expectations. Maybe I came into this pay-per-view thinking that, oh, I paid 35 bucks, it can't measure up to what I paid for it, and really, it never can if 35 bucks can it. But, I guess I went in with the WWE mindset, like, oh, this is going to be okay, hopefully it'll be really good. But, it's Ring of Honor, New Japan was there, I should have known it would be freaking really good. So, you know, maybe I went in, underestimated the show, everybody, you know, worked their asses off for the whole card, including that match. Um, I was glad to see the addiction win. There were, um, again, there's some cool spots in there. I, but I, I enjoy how they edited to it. a little tap on the boot, the little love tap on Tanahashi's boot from <laughs> Chris McDaniels and the Steel and the Wind at the end rolling in there. Good shit. Then we get to the main event. One of my favorite matches of the year. Um, I do feel it could have been better. I wouldn't call it match of the year. But it's up there. I really, really, really enjoyed the title reigns and... Jay Lethal's historic freaking reign comes to an end. I was one of Jay Lethal's biggest supporters. I love Jay Lethal's whole gimmick. I love what he did. He not only has he raised the prestige of Ring of Honor when they're having a bit of a doubt when they were having a bit of downtime, but he legitimized the television championship. When I first started watching Ring of Honor, Jay Lethal was the man to watch. Um, the television title, I remember. Him having a program with Tamasha Champa and it being awesome. Program El Generico, aka Sami Zayn now, being awesome. 
Uh, and then he finally, you know, flowed around a little bit, won the TV title back, aligned himself with the House of Truth, and took off, legitimized the television championship belt. Took it to another level. BJ Briscoe, after almost like a year and a half or something like that with the TV title, beat Jay Briscoe for the world title. Had that for a couple months for both of them. And how long has he had the world title? Over a year now? I was just there for the year anniversary when he beat Jay Briscoe a second time. But, you know, as they say, he legitimized everything. The world belt is already, you know, official, but <sighs> thank you, Jay Lethal, for being the bright spot for a ring of honor when they need you the most. But like they say, all good things have to come to an end. Jay Lethal lost. And who a better person to drop the belt to than Adam Cole, baby! Should've with my Bullet Club shirt, I'm so happy. But yeah, thank you Jay Lethal. Awesome that Adam Cole won. I'm definitely looking forward to Ring of Honor. Hopefully they don't give me no bullshit episodes where they don't go to next week and still recaps. I want fresh Ring of Honor episodes. I want to see what's next. I want to see what's going down. Awesome main event. I will say awesome show. Um, two huge thumbs up. And a recommendation to watch this show. Death for Dishonor from Ring of Honor 2016. Again, 35 bucks. The price point is Stickler. Um, they didn't have it on sale on PlayStation for 28 bucks like they usually do. I was a little let down. But... You know, I love Ring of Honor. I was happy to support them. Two thumbs up for the show. I would say it's probably their best show they've had all year. Definitely check out Ring of Honor if you haven't been doing so. And thank you so much for checking out my reviews. I love when you guys come and watch this stuff. Um, check me out on, of course, subscribe here at YouTube.com slash Tith Warfare. We're about to drop some new music. We just dropped some new music on iTunes as well. In the Sith Clan, the click Darth Lord Tyranos' is a new mixtape, Dooku the Monster 2. Of course, you know, I got some uh, guest spots on there. Check it out. iTunes, SithClan.com, of course. Donate there if you want to help us make some more music, you know what I'm saying? Also, like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash the Sith Clan. Follow me at SithZigZagZap. Check out more videos. Darth Lord Cadiz has Sith Clan reaction videos to Star Wars. Who wouldn't want to watch that for the Rogue One? Come on. And I will be back hopefully tomorrow if I can get Evolve order to my computer and get going. Everything should be good. Hopefully I'll be there. And if not, worst case scenario, I will see you for Impact slash Ring of Honor review next week. As always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for feeling dark side of the forest when I speak to you. And remember.